morning, good afternoon to everyone and welcome to our session today. Uh, I am Violeta. We are delighted to have Karin here from the product management team uh, for Oracle Spatial and Graph Technology. Karin will do a presentation on Oracle Spatial today, a new feature available in um, Oracle database. Karin, uh, welcome to our session. Um, one more note on my side, and then I will pass over to Karin, is that uh, for everyone joining this call, keep in mind that this session has a purely informative um, and educational scope. So in case any one of you would like to use our services further, you may connect with somebody from the Oracle account team, as well as for the ones that um, might want to watch any of our sessions recordings in the future, keep in mind that as our products are enhanced on a regular basis, so you might see some differences within the Cloud Console menu. That was all on my side. Uh, on my side, Karin, over to you. Thank you very much, Violeta. You're welcome. So let me share my screen. So this is not the screen I want to share, but uh, right away, uh, I will be starting with the presentation. Okay, so thanks a lot, Violeta. And um, let me just directly jump into the topic and uh, maybe I'm going to start uh, telling you just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a computer scientist. I've been working for Oracle since 2007, mostly in very technical positions, um, um, a solution engineer uh, for on-premise uh, customers uh, as well as for uh, cloud projects. And since the beginning, I've been working for uh, with customers on projects, um, uh, looking into uh, spatial data um, and also looking into graphs. So and this is why I joined last year uh, the Oracle Spatial and Graph uh, Product Management Team to uh, work on these uh, specific projects uh, with Oracle customers and partners. So I live uh, north of Berlin, here you actually can see on the slides two of my passions. So I'm passionate about maps and I'm passionate about kayaking. And putting these two things together, uh, I love uh, drawing patterns on, on maps by kayaking uh, lakes and rivers and seas. And yeah, this is something I enjoy very much, kayaking and then seeing the patterns um, that I leave um, by uh, picking the tracks uh, with my GPS positions uh, during the kayaking tours. So much about me. So, and this is actually also something that has very much to do with what we do at Oracle. So let's start with um, why spatial data and location information is so important. So first and foremost, uh, location information is the ubiquitous. So it's part of almost every data set in enterprises, in public services or in consumer apps. It comes in the form of background maps, of routes, positional data referencing an object or a person like you have seen it on the map before, or it is implicitly included in an address or a place name. So in taking uh, into account the spatial relationships, um, this is crucial for all kinds of analytical questions. It enables users to provide better services, help optimize uh, their workflow uh, workforces, locate retail or distribution centers, evaluate sales, marketing campaigns, and many other things are related to spatial data and analyzing spatial relationships. So occasionally spatial analysis can be actually as simple as plotting location uh, information on a map. In most cases, however, um, some kind of data enrichment, spatial filtering or aggregation, or other types of analysis together with uh, interactive map visualization is required. So very often the analysis would then be passed to uh, onto other applications uh, through, automatic, through automated workflows. And those workflows would also have to be uh, spatially um, enabled. All those aspects of uh, working with location information are being addressed by Oracle Spatial. 
as part of ORCID's Converge database. And what makes Orica Spatial compelling is the unique way in which we enable developers uh, of operation and analytic systems to actually seamlessly work with location information. So you can work with geospatial data in the same way you work with any other kind of business information stored either in the Orica database or on an object storage uh, or wherever the data are stored. And this is regardless actually of where uh, the database is, de is deployed, deployed. So most people um, associate Oracle Spatial with spatial capabilities in the database, um, but our offering is uh, consists actually of three parts. The first part is the core functionality uh, in the Oracle database, um, which allows you to deal with all kind of geospatial information, making use of the multimodal capabilities of our converged database. So you can store, manage, process, and analyze all types of spatial data in the database together with your business data, as I said before. And in case also of uh, Oracle Application Express, you can store your applications as well uh, in the database. The second part of our offering is a number of components, APIs, and services that make it simpler for developers to build spatial applications. Uh, they enable programmers or data scientists to use their language of choice or a framework of choice like SQL, Java, Python, JavaScript, or REST. Um, so to do actually things like visualizing maps, putting data on maps, or performing uh, advanced analysis. Some of these components like the routing engine are deployed on the application server, uh, but also um, these components are part of the Oracle database licenses. So you don't need to uh, license uh, those uh, components uh, extra. And the third part has been of a real game changer for us uh, since um, we have uh, introduced a self-service tool called Spatial Studio with a purpose to make it easier than ever for non-experts um, to get started with spatial data. On the one hand, it's designed for analysis uh, to perform spatial analysis and create interactive maps. On the other side, it helps developers to create spatial applications and processing workflows very quickly. So what is Spatial Studio? Um, we've had very powerful spatial features in the Oracle database for over 25 years uh, when it comes to storing, managing, processing, and analyzing spatial data. Traditionally, the way that you would work with uh, these features has been through our various APIs, uh, which often required at least a certain amount of coding and knowledge about programming languages, at least SQL. So those were essentially developer toolkits. With Spatial Studio, this changed significantly. We have simplified a lot of the spatial work and turned it into self-service operations. You can set up spatial data processing and analysis workflows uh, using the database without knowing the syntax to do that or without asking chat GPT to come up with some useful code. So that's the purpose of Spatial Studio. And a quick word uh, or some words about um, deploying the Oracle database. The spatial features are an integral part of the autonomous database as well as all relevant database, cloud services and deployments on premise. So they are included without any additional license costs, uh, as I said before, um, and they are fully supported. Spatial Studio and the additional APIs, middleware components, services uh, are available as OCI marketplace images, or they can be installed manually on the Oracle Cloud or uh, on your um, local uh, service. So, and 
think this is uh, for the overview of the last slide. The overall architecture of geospatial platform we can offer uh, uh, looks actually as follows. So we have the database uh, with all its analytic capabilities as a foundation. We have a set of programming interface libraries in Java um, um, JTE components for the developers sitting on top of it. Our usual tools and frameworks are based on these APIs as are our solutions from the Oracle Analytics Cloud or the IoT Cloud or also a large number of Oracle um, applications, um, not to mention third-party applications. Okay, so much to give you a short overview of what we are offering in terms of Oracle Spatial Technologies and tools. And I would like to get started with um, actually building with you a um, tiny uh, geospatial platform that is enough to get started with um, loading spatial data, enriching spatial data, um, processing, analyzing, and visualizing spatial data, and also share uh, data, those data with uh, everybody who's interested in. And what you can see here is something we have um, um, published on our, in our uh, Oracle Reference Architecture Center. There you can find plenty of um, architecture blueprints, um, very often uh, automated uh, using Terraform, but um, what that means, uh, I'm going to show you uh, right away. So this is a logical architecture where we want to manage um, spatial data, uh, combine it with other application data, do some enrichment or refineries, um, validations and uh, actually using um, these data in our applications and getting uh, specific insights uh, about the data where we can uh, rely our decisions upon. When we look at the uh, more logical um, architecture in terms of uh, database uh, or in, in terms of services, um, um, on our Oracle Cloud, then you can see here that we have actually integrated uh, several tools. And the most uh, important um, service here is the autonomous database as um, the serving uh, platform to store uh, uh, the uh, spatial information. We have uh, Spatial Studio as um, the tool to uh, get started with. And of course, uh, together with um, every Oracle database, you also have Oracle Application Express, which you can use. I'm not going to show you uh, today um, an, an example of using or uh, a demo using Apex, but uh, I've um, prepared something at least to show you about Apex and spatial data. And if you want to know more about that specific combination using spatial data and maps in Apex, just drop us a note and we are happy to, to follow up on this as well. What I'm going to show you today is actually uh, setting up this autonomous database, uh, setting up a spatial studio on, on a compute instance and this uh, in this automatic uh, fashion, um, as I mentioned before. Let me stop my presentation briefly here. Uh, I'm going to uh, switch over to uh, exactly that reference architecture. And you have seen before that we can directly deploy the architecture on the Oracle Cloud in this automatic fashion using Terraform. So hopefully keep fingers crossed, everything works nicely. So this is live. Um, I'm going to use my cloud account um, um, uh, for uh, where all my colleagues uh, can use um, cloud services. I've also done uh, the same thing um, I'm showing you right now on my uh, free tier uh, cloud account. So it works there uh, nicely as well. So uh, either you have a paid Oracle cloud account or uh, using free tier, you can do that um, in the same manner. 
So what I'm going to do here right now is I'm creating based on the Terraform scripts, I'm creating a stack in the Oracle, on the Oracle cloud. And for the stack, I need to pro, uh, provide some uh, parameters. So the first uh, page uh, is nothing special. The next um, uh, parameters are about um, the autonomous database to be set up and the compute instance for where we uh, deploy um, Spatial Studio. So the name prefix, uh, I leave the default. The database type in my case is a paid Oracle data uh, uh, warehouse. Um, so for you, it could be a free tier, but make sure uh, you have a free uh, tier instance still available uh, in your service limits. Um, in my case here, uh, I check um, bring your own license. So let me give better name. So since I have set up everything yesterday, special DB, I'm uh, choosing special DB2 today. So here is uh, the next uh, part is about uh, the compute instance where to deploy it. Uh, I'm selecting the shape. And for those having free tier accounts, there uh, is the micro shape uh, available uh, to set it up. Uh, we have um, Spatial Studio running on Tomcat, so uh, uh, the, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, a Jetty um, server. Uh, so this comes uh, with port 4040 to be opened. Then there is um, an account uh, to log in to Spatial Studio, which is called Studio Admin. And uh, one of the prerequisites um, well, for um, running this, um, uh, Terraform or uh, deploying this Terraform stack is that you store the uh, passwords uh, you are using for the studio uh, user uh, as well as for um, the database user uh, as a secret uh, in on Oracle uh, on the OCI. So here I have the secret uh, called Spatial Studio Admin. Uh, I'm not creating a new VCN. I am using an existing one. You would probably uh, uh, choose the option to create a new one. So this is a uh, VCN and the subnet definition for the compute instance. I do have um, um, a database user uh, or uh, a database user is created called Studio Repo, where all the metadata for Spatial Studio will be um, stored. And for this uh, Studio Repo user, uh, I have the um, admin, uh, the password stored in a secret as well. Oh, um, now I see that I'm missing something uh, I haven't prepared before. Hopefully, everything works nicely. Okay, so for uh, setting up a compute instance, of course, I need uh, an SSH key. And then that's actually it. So let me check everything. And now I'm saying run apply, which is one of the Terraform statements to uh, create a stack um, where all the uh, resources uh, defined in the Terraform scripts uh, are going to be uh, created right away. So this is taking a couple of, of minutes um, to set up everything. Uh, and we are going to come back uh, later on uh, uh, taking a look at um, what uh, has been deployed and uh, how you can access it. So this is uh, the first demo. Uh, Karen, can I, inter can I interrupt you? There's a, sure. while, while, while that's in progress, uh, there's uh, a question from Zach, Zachy. Uh, what, appro what appropriate tools allow us to analyze location over time, e.g. time and location when two moving objects were close? You can do that with Spatial uh, uh, Studio as well. Uh, you can uh, use your own Python code uh, that runs against the database. Um, what you need actually is um, the time information or the timestamps. 
Uh, so what you've seen uh, at the beginning, the tracks uh, I've been ta uh, uh, I typically take when kayaking, those can be expressed as uh, a sequence of points with timestamps uh, assigned, uh, and, uh, elevations and maybe other information as well. And um, there you can um, uh, take the data and uh, analyze those um, using Oracle Spatial inside the database, using Python uh, code um, running against the data in the Oracle database. Uh, I've set up um, just recently some, some Python code um, uh, with the data uh, science uh, cloud service and analyze um, those uh, tracks. So there are different uh, possibilities. You can write your Java code um, and, and uh, analyze uh, the um, time series data uh, with the location information. So that's your choice to do that. And Spatial Studio comes with support for uh, 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 visualizing um, uh, uh, positions um, and spatial information over time as well. Cool. No, thanks. Sure. Thanks, Karen. Uh, Zaki, if, if that uh, answered your question, uh, just let us know. If not, I'll, I'm just posting a, a way we can follow up on those uh, later on. Karen, with boost calls, I'll just mention that in the chat, in the Q&A now. Back to you, Karen. Okay, thanks. So let me go back to my slide. Uh, let me check how I can get back to it since there is this. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we are setting up that um, um, geospatial uh, data platform. And here, uh, just um, to remind you um, the uh, prerequisites, um, create an SSH key pair um, to uh, to be used with your compute instance where Spatial Studio is deployed, uh, create the secrets uh, where you store um, the data, and just have in mind, uh, we don't allow uh, some uh, special characters, so uh, be shy away from underscores and exclamation marks, so uh, these are the allowed uh, uh, special characters to be used in passwords, otherwise uh, maybe you're wondering why you can't log in. Okay, so uh, why um, the uh, Spatial Studio is setting, uh, set uh, up uh, and uh, autonomous database is deployed uh, with uh, the user I've defined to be created. Um, there are other ways to uh, deploy Spatial Studio um, standalone in case, for example, if you already have your autonomous database set up or a database cloud service uh, running uh, in your tenant, then of course you can make sure um, that uh, you're using the existing um, uh, services uh, in conjunction with Spatial Studio. So go to the uh, Oracle Cloud Marketplace and deploy it from there. So, and this is uh, where you can find it. Uh, you just search uh, the applications for Oracle Spatial Studio, and then you choose um, the version of um, you want to deploy. Um, typically, Spatial Studio has a much shorter um, uh, release cycle than uh, maybe other, um, or, or the Oracle database. So typically uh, we release uh, Oracle Spatial Studio versions uh, every three to four months. So uh, in order to make sure that we uh, provide you with the new features as soon as possible. Okay, so uh, actually I've already, uh, talked a little bit about Spatial Studio. And um, what I'm going to show you um, in, in the next demo is a little bit about how we can use Spatial Studio uh, to load and prepare uh, data, or data in terms of uh, taking the uh, spatial, specific spatial data formats and loading those into the Oracle database. Um, enriching data by um, uh, turning address data into actual um, um, spatial information that can be plotted on maps, creating the spatial indices to efficiently uh, uh, 
access spatial information and analyze spatial information. We have this visualization part where we have drag and drop user interface uh, to uh, put data on your maps uh, and do uh, interactive analysis. Uh, everything is done without writing a single line of code. Uh, and by plotting and or plotting data on the map, regional data, and, and the results of your spatial uh, analysis, uh, you can very often uh, already see in a visual manner uh, how uh, data are related and uh, what kind of, of, of information, um, uh, specific information they give you. And of course, we can share um, the data with others, um, either being the raw data or the um, data sets or um, the results of your data anal analysis or um, uh, the maps you are creating and the projects that contain your maps. So let's um, check um, our platform and use uh, Spatial Studio. So um, let me uh, and take this here. So here we are uh, going back to uh, the deployment of our stack. You see here uh, everything is green. So we have the stack deployed and uh, at the end of the log you will find some useful information. For example, where you find Spatial Studio. This is something uh, uh, we can copy and paste or we can uh, take it uh, actually also from here. Uh, if you, if we go to the stack, so let's oh, okay, just a second. So this is June twenty one. Okay, so here we have application information. Uh, we can also take it from here. And what we need to uh, see here is actually um, two things. We can directly start uh, Spatial Studio from here, uh, which has the same uh, IP as uh, I copied and the URL I copied before from the log. And one more thing we need here, um, the autonomous database, um, you, you might know that it comes always with the admin uh, user um, uh, already created. And in order to make sure you have the um, you have access to the um, database, you need to copy um, that password and um, uh, take it from there to access the uh, autonomous database. So uh, let me start first with um, uh, starting a uh, uh, um, special studio. Um, don't shy away from um, uh, the a warning here, um, this is set up without a specific certificate. So there is a warning um, uh, that I'm going to accept um, the risk here. And Spatial Studio um, comes with that Studio Admin user. Um, and hopefully I remember my very sophisticated password uh, stored in the secret. Oh, here we go. Okay. Now we are in Spatial Studio, but before uh, I'm going um, to um, uh, take you to uh, uh, Spatial Studio, uh, let me go briefly back to um, uh, uh, the stack uh, I've deployed and, and check um, um, the Oracle database. So here, um, you can see uh, the additional information you might need, also uh, some instructions in case you need to uh, go to the uh, uh, virtual machine and, and start um, or stop or start the service uh, to run Spatial Studio. Just go there and check the information that are provided here. Um, but what I wanted to show you here right now is first, um, just the compute instance um, uh, I've set up here. So this is the compute instance here up and running, which I've set up right now where Spatial Studio is running. And um, let us also check the autonomous database that has been created. 
and for that here is the one uh, right now created and for that uh, let us go to well let me just briefly uh, store uh, the password somewhere uh, in order to keep it so here on the database um, 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 uh, in the as part of the autonomous database you have these kind of tools and there's also this tool uh, database actions uh, let's go to database action uh, and log in as data uh, as admin so you remember this user is automatically set up we you find the information the password there you sign in um, and probably the next thing you uh, would be to uh, uh, alter your password uh, i'm not going to do that right now in the interest of time but what we are going to do is uh, checking the database user that has been set up to store the metadata uh, for spatial studio so here you can see um, the users uh, and here you find studio repo this is the user that will keep the metadata and what we need to make sure is uh, that it has unlimited table space and just in case you want to access it um, here uh, make sure that um, um, it has web access uh, as well in order to use uh, database actions uh, for that user as well. Okay, and what you would actually also do is um, creating a new user um, that has, um, that will uh, store uh, spatial information. Um, um, also, in the interest of time, I'm going to use the same Studio Wrapper user uh, to store uh, my application data. But this is not, as I said, recommended. You would set up your application users that are, are responsible to store uh, location information uh, in a separate manner and make sure that um, uh, this user has the same rights to load uh, and store data and have access to the uh, table space. Okay. So uh, let's get back to Spatial Studio. So Spatial Studio, um, when it comes to storing data, um, has um, a connection uh, right away to uh, the Studio Repo user uh, in your autonomous database uh, to store this uh, metadata. And of course, if I had created right now another user uh, in the autonomous database, I would create a new connection uh, and define the, um, the connection by using the database wallet uh, and getting access um, to the autonomous database as well. Okay, so connection is the first uh, thing you need to check. Then, in order to create a project uh, that has uh, maps, uh, we need to um, look for data sets. And um, uh, as data sets, I've um, um, looked for several data sets that are publicly available. And we're going to get started with a data set um, that has uh, addresses of Finland. Um, so let me just like that. Uh, so place information from Finland. So uh, let me do that here. So. Let's take these uh, information. So you, what you can see here, this is um, text information. So uh, comma separated uh, values. Uh, and you find uh, the first uh, line is uh, 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 the header. And um, what we can see here, uh, we do have address information, but uh, this data set also contains um, the location information in terms uh, in, in the form of longitude and latitude values for uh, coordinate system um, uh, with a specific ID that is available uh, for the whole world. And let's take this one and load it up. Spatial Studio uh, recognizes several uh, standard formats of spatial information. Um, and uh, let's see how we are 
coming up with the data. Uh, so we are uploading that file. It's yes. Quite Aaron, a while you're time. while you're waiting for that, there's a, a question from P. Mushka. I hope I haven't butchered your name right out. Um, uh, checking the distance between two SDO geometry points. Is it based on a straight line between them, or is there a way to provide another result based on public routes such as roads? Yeah. So um, the first uh, calculation is uh, based on this uh, straight line. So it's a Euclidean uh, distance that um, is calculated if you use uh, something like SDO distance uh, calculations. You can do um, a, a calculation. Uh, you can calculate distance is based on routes uh, and for that you would need a, a, a route network typically it's a street network um, that uh, is provided by um, um, companies like here or TomTom Tom, uh, and that um, make this uh, data available and um, as a data pump um, for the Oracle database and then you can load uh, the reference data with a route uh, network and then you can also calculate distances based, based on the routes and what I mentioned before one of the services uh, we uh, have in our um, toolkit is a routing engine um, which is partly implemented in the Oracle database but also uh, additional components software components are deployed on the web server and together uh, with uh, the reference data uh, you can do a uh, routing, uh, typical routing uh, uh, requests. Does that answer the question? I, I, I literally just type in that. I, uh, hopefully it does. Uh, um, P. Mushkov, if it does, uh, just uh, let us know. If not, um, uh, you, can, yep. you can go back later on. Thanks for answering that. Okay, so I've just um, um, f uh, uh, finished this uh, loading up um, the data. Uh, from um, Finland, and uh, while uh, the data is is uploaded, um, let me just uh, see whether um, there is any okay anything I missed. Okay, no. So the data set is uploaded, and here you can see there is an exclamation mark, so some kind of warning. Okay, let me check that. Okay, let's start with uh, go to the columns. So we do need key for the data set. So looking at um, the information here, I assume the building ID is a key. No, it's not. Okay, then let us create our own key. Uh, okay, so just, just a second. So I'm seeing, uh, okay. So we have now added just the primary key to the data. And uh, while this is processing, uh, let us check the second issue. So and the second one is actually um, 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 the special studio um, advises me either to geocode the addresses uh, or to create a long uh, latitude longitude index on on the uh, uh, information uh, contained in the data set and since we have the longitude and latitude as numeric value we are going to create an index uh, and okay so special studio was smart enough to uh, know uh, which columns to use for that and here we go so the special index is something uh, we need for efficiently uh, um, doing a spatial, uh, analyzing spatial relationships, such as uh, calculating the distance or nearest neighbors of those kind of things or within distance uh, calculations. And once we have set up uh, the index, uh, we are fine to go and create our first project. And a project typically is a base map uh, which we can see here. You have different options to um, um, uh, use a base map. Uh, I'm not going to uh, do much about that, but uh, I'm going to check my finished addresses uh, and put those on a map. So I'm going to load the data set, 
drop that on the map and as you can see here uh, the map automatically zooms um, to contain um, the um, information so okay maybe this is probably not enough what i'm going to do um, so let me just uh, save that project load coaching okay maybe uh, for an analysis uh, i want to add one more data set let me check whether uh, what else i do have uh, actually i had No, uh, da, 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 da. let me just, ah, here we go. Okay, I have another data set containing the uh, different admin boundaries for Finland. Uh, it's a zip file containing several so-called shape files. Shape is a typical format uh, for spatial information. And uh, again, uh, Spatial Studio is smart enough to um, recognize that there are several um, shape files contained in this zip file. So the first with um, the admin boundary, uh, the, uh, the upper level, and then that one, and all the different administrative levels. And we have five levels for Finland. So go away there and let me see where to upload the data. Okay, we are going through. Okay, perfect. Okay, and here you can see we have five more data sets uh, easily loaded up. Let me just uh, go to one of the data sets and see uh, where we have a special um, where we have a primary key and for that one we are using um, this as a key and right now uh, i can take this data set and add it to my project so let's take it and add it here and what you can do now is we have a second data set uh, with the admin boundaries of Finland. Uh, so in order to be able to use some typical features of a map, let's put some map tooling on top of that. So here we have the uh, the administrative levels, um, uh, administrative areas of level two for Finland. We have our addresses and Let's just briefly implement one uh, tiny kind of workflow. So first, we want to uh, um, do some filtering on the spatial data, uh, on the uh, address data. And here, uh, we want to just use um, the uh, street uh, um, um, uh, buildings um, that have um, the house number one. And what you can see here now is um, that we have the uh, result of the analysis right away displayed uh, coming up and we are going to display it on the map right now. So and here, so let's check uh, some settings just to make sure that uh, we have only the, um, sorry, uh, interaction. So as a tooltip, so info window, so street and house number and building use. Um, so let's check this. And now you can see here when clicking on one, some of these, um, you can see that they all have the house number one. Okay, so this is my first analysis. Now I can do something else. I can check which of the uh, addresses, filtered addresses, are actually belonging to um, that area. So let me check this. 
I'm going to create another analysis. Uh, again. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, take the filtered address, do now a spatial analysis and return shapes that are inside another. So um, I'm doing a um, relationship, a spatial relationship um, where I'm using um, the uh, fitted addresses. Uh, um, I'm using the filtered addresses as a um, um, data set I want to analyze uh, and I want to map those with um, the um, with the areas with the admin levels and I want only want to use uh, the selected admin uh, level uh, the admin uh, the selected uh, administrative area and what you can see here now is um, the result of that analysis and if we drop that on the map we should be able to see only those uh, addresses that belong to that or that are inside that area. And now you can go further and um, do some combination, create a bounding box uh, around uh, all the points or an addresses. Um, you can combine it with uh, other data sets. So everything you're going um, to do um, here, you can um, um, process further and analyze further. And once you are ready with it and you want to share your data, you have two options. You can share your project uh, by publishing it, or you can go and um, um, uh, share the results of your analysis um, directly um, with other users by uh, checking the data sets. And here you find now um, the additional data sets. And once you go there, to properties. You can find here that there are endpoints, GeoJSON endpoints where you can access the data and I'm copying it and creating a new tab. And what you can see here is the result of that analysis you can directly access using um, a URL or a, a REST endpoint. Um, let me check the raw data and you can see, see it right away and uh, access it. So for those of you who are developers, this is uh, a way to access what others have prepared with Spatial Studio. Okay, so much about uh, Spatial Studio. Let me um, go back to my presentation. I think we are already... Um, uh, advanced and time. So um, just the data flow uh, slightly. And I'm just going to some slides to show you some impressions of what you can do with Spatial Studio in terms of analysis, in terms of uh, what kind of spatial data you can deal with. Um, you see all kind of, of different projects you can uh, work on. Uh, here is um, working with address data that don't uh, contain um, longitude and latitude information. You can use the geocoding feature of uh, Spatial Studio. Uh, you can work with raster information um, uh, or 3D information to plot that on your map. Uh, here uh, is something uh, I mentioned before when uh, the question was about uh, calculating distances, a root network or a street network um, and um, using that street network for um, analysis. Uh, here um, you have uh, time-based information, uh, for instance, uh, tracking, tracing of, of positions. You can um, use Spatial uh, Studio for that one. And here is a part where you do this no-code uh, spatial analytics with the pre-implemented um, uh, spatial uh, functions and operators. Okay. Just... A few more words about uh, where else you can use spatial data in, in conjunction with which tools. I just want to um, uh, point you to one of the uh, publicly available uh, examples of uh, where uh, an Apex application makes use of 
spatial data in the Oracle database, as well as um, the map visualization components. So if you call um, the uh, website of uh, Fraport in Germany, where you have their uh, noise data plotted on on the map uh, in conjunction with uh, flight tracks and um, um, uh, and uh, some kind of analysis uh, using these information. Um, there is a sample map um, application, a private application for Apex to get started with. I just recommend um, to get to have a look into this. Um, you can find all kind of um, uh, tips and tricks how to use spatial information, and how to uh, implement um, uh, spatial analysis and to to use uh, the map features, uh, the map regions and map features in spatial uh, in, in APEX um, to um, write your own um, location enabled applications in APEX. And maybe one last word about a specific uh, feature of the autonomous database. Um, um, we have had um, the, um, the possibility to uh, turn address information into geocodes um, um, for a very long time, but this uh, always required to have um, a reference data set um, in the same manner as I explained it before for uh, the routing engine. So doing geocoding uh, needs of this reference data set. Uh, uh, we do have an, uh, this new offering um, uh, in forms of um, um, PS6 package called SDO underscore geocoder and a new uh, uh, function called ELOC underscore geocode, which does not require um, that you have your reference data set somewhere installed or uh, available as a service. We have, uh, we provide a internally a service that is uh, reached out to uh, for the geocoding uh, requests uh, and also for the reverse geocoding uh, requests. And how does it look like? Uh, the autonomous database, uh, the user who needs to do the geocoding needs to get uh, access granted by eLog underscore grant underscore access in order to be able to reach out via the network to that service. And then you just uh, use that um, function in your SQL code um, to do um, the geocoding. It's very easy and simple to use in case you want to uh, check it out. Uh, here's a blog post I've written uh, about that topic. Uh, so uh, you can easily uh, follow that one. Or uh, you can also use uh, something we call Oracle Live Labs Sprint, uh, where you can have the step-by-step -step um, uh, workshop uh, covering that topic and step by steps. It's just a few steps uh, you need to do, and uh, you can also find the code here. Okay, so I don't have time for that part, so uh, try it out yourself. And if you want to know more, um, here are a few links uh, you can follow up. I highly recommend uh, to check your APEC, uh, Ask Tom sessions um, that cover spatial. Uh, you find uh, several uh, uh, quite current uh, sessions we've done uh, since the beginning of this year covering general, uh, general topics as well as specific topics and there's more to come. Uh, reference architecture I talked about or follow us on Twitter. Uh, I invite you to get in touch with us uh, if you have any questions, if you want to follow up on specific topics. Uh, I appreciate very much uh, looking and if you find the time and tell us about the projects as well. So this is from my side. Uh, thank you very much for listening so far. Uh, I'm going to stop my presentation right here. Thanks a lot, Karin, for, uh, for being here with us and for presenting. Uh, thank you. Everyone a pleasure. for the uh, same as uh, for us. Um, uh, thank you all for being in this call, for attending the session, and we hope you, uh, you will join us again soon. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye bye. Thank you.